Hello everyone, I'm back for our newest webinar, and this time I'd like to briefly discuss the advantages of using herpes simplex viruses, or HSVs. Most people associate HSVs with cold sores or other diseases, but not for salangene therapy. In fact, HSVs are becoming increasingly popular in the salangene therapy space for a number of reasons. HSVs are naturally neurotrophic, meaning they have a preference for infecting neurons. While some HSVs can directly infect neuronal cells, the majority of them utilize epithelial cells as their primary site of infection. Once inside the epithelial cells, HSVs enter a lytic cycle during which they replicate and give rise to new progeny virions. Virions released from the primary site of infection then enter the sensory neurons, followed by their retrograde axonal transport to the neuronal cell body, where they can establish a lifelong latent infection. Upon reactivation of latent HSVs, they first replicate inside the neurons and are then transported back in an anterograde fashion to the epithelial cells, thereby infecting them once again. These properties make HSVs an attractive choice for gene therapies targeting diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, where long-term expression of the target gene is essential. HSVs exhibit broad tropism, meaning they can infect many different cell types. Unlike adeno-associated viruses, or AAVs, they carry huge amounts of DNA sequence for delivery to target cells. Whereas AAVs have a genome size of only about 4.7 kilobases, or KB, HSVs have a genome size of over 150 KB, which consists of several non-essential genes. Many of these non-essential genes can be deleted without affecting the virus replication cycle. And in fact, this approach is often exploited for the development of attenuated HSV vectors with oncolytic potential. These oncolytic viruses can selectively replicate in and kill cancer cells while being unable to grow in normal cells. Telemagene, or TVEC, an FDA-approved oncolytic virus currently used for treating melanoma, is an example of such an attenuated HSV vector. Another factor that makes HSV an attractive candidate for oncolytic virotherapy is that they are highly infectious, and they can complete its entire replication cycle in just 10 hours to release thousands of progeny virions. This is much shorter compared to the time taken by other common viruses. Last but not least, HSVs do not integrate into host cell genomic DNA, remaining what is called episomal. This means there is far lower chance of insertional mutagenesis and causing cancer. Moreover, HSVs can evoke a strong immune response in host organism without integrating into the host genome. This makes HSVs suitable for being used as viral vaccines in a similar way to adenovirus used in the fight against COVID-19. By harnessing new technologies, it is possible to use HSVs that are rendered harmless to trick the body's immune system to recognize and neutralize pathogenic HSVs. Currently, there are no FDA-approved vaccines to treat either HSV-1 or HSV-2, so the urgency to develop anti-HSV vaccines is high. At Vector Builder, we offer two different types of HSV vectors, amplicon vectors and HSV backyaks. Whereas amplicon vectors are introduced into producer cell lines, along with additional vectors to enable the virus to be packaged into HSV particles, our proprietary backyaks can be customized based on your needs. That is, they can be used for generating full-length HSVs, replication defective HSVs, and attenuated HSVs. Please visit VectorBuilder.com to read more about the various options we offer and send our design team a request for particular designs or get their advice on the best vector system. I hope I have given you a brief overview of HSVs and their versatile applications, as well as why they are considered an exciting choice for cell and gene therapies. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.